Wizzafu here. Check it out. I gotta keep my head on the left over here. So, so like I don't put my head inside the, this Coleman bucket. Hey, what's up? This is another video in the Load Ragger 5 vs. 5 development series. I'm working on the AI system. Last video I was working on the behavior trees and they're all well and good now. Now it's time to get the AI system going. Check it out. It's kind of going already. We've got a very simple situation here. I'm the little circle. That skull thing is a creep. A very poorly programmed creep. That's, but at least the AI system is going. The basic mechanics of it are working. The AI can go into different like modes and seek the player, charge the player, get stuck, turn around, that kind of stuff. What needs to happen now is the, it needs to be able to attack the player. So um, that's pretty simple though. Just spawn a little entity that only lasts for a fraction of a second that attacks the player. Simple, simple. So anyways, um, let's look at some of that code that actually makes this all work. You can see that underneath the player, or underneath the creep, there's its current uh, sequence that it's running, like seek or charge or stuck. And then T is the timer that it currently has. It counts down when it gets something. Okay, look. let's look at the code. Um, I've broken the AI system into different functions. This is as opposed to um, Songbringer's AI system, which had everything in one big function. All of these different behaviors were all in one, and it made it, it made it pretty hard to find a function and um, or jump to a, a function really quickly. Check this out. Look how fa fast I can jump to a function now. I want to go look at the behavior for if rand. Boom, I'm there. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. A, a more organized behavior system. Basically, when the AI system ticks, it calls this run behavior function. And the run behavior function first looks for one of the sub behavior functions, which is just a combination of two different behaviors. Like, for example, behavior if and behavior rand gives us behave the behavior if rand function. And, um, and then if it can't find one of those double ones or with a type and a subtype, it goes and just tries a direct behavior function where it just has the type. And these behavior functions are like uh, select, sequence, these things that don't require, that aren't, don't have multiple subtypes. So there's two different uh, maps of functions that can be called, and that's how this all system works. So um, this is a behavior tree. Um, if you're interested in how behavior trees work, I would recommend checking out a tutorial. They're pretty simple things. They're a finite state machine, basically, that uh, runs, can basically do pretty complex AIs with very simple uh, components. So um, the, the, the nut and bolts of it all is two different types of uh, uh, behavior uh, leaves or nodes, whatever you want to call them. Behavior select and behavior sequence. Let's actually look at the creep. Here's the, the AI for the creep. It starts with a select, and then underneath that select, it's got a bunch of different sequences, right? So basically, it's going to go select one of those sequences to run. And it'll start with the first one. It'll look at this sequence. And if any of these things inside this sequence returns false, it will uh, it will not be able to run that sequence. So it will go to the next one. Like, okay, if this, if, if let's say, if stuck returns false, then it won't run the stuck sequence. Or if target is something, then it won't run the choose sequence. But however, if it does get stuck, and if stuck returns true, then it can automatically do both of these things because neither of these are going to return false. So it'll run this sequence if it gets stuck. So that's kind of how behavior trees work in a nutshell. It's just a bunch of different selects and sequences, which you could think of as ands and ors. Um, the sequence being and and the select being or. Um, so there you go. The basic AI system for load ragger is in place. And uh, the next things I'll be doing is uh, making the creep attack the player and also implementing AI steering. As you can see, the AI is quite clunky in how it only moves in eight different compass directions. Same with the player. Um, and Load Ragger is going to be a 360 degree movement game. 
So uh, that will that will need to change, and I need to kind of work on the, a new little bit of input system stuff to get that going correctly. And I'll need to crack out my game controller so I actually have some good vector input uh, to be able to test with. But yeah, 360 degree movement will happen, and <laughs> stupid things like this, like him getting stuck and uh, being up there in the corner. Oh, he's actually because whenever he gets stuck, he does dur rand, so he's randomly going back into the corner. So, anyways. Some things, some improvements to be making, but at least uh, progress has been made. So, thanks for watching.